And we're live here, halftime with Harmon from New Orleans. Walk-ons. And I'm with Tank Williams. I'm with, with the sexiest man on the interwebs right now. No, Look no, at no, that no. hair. Isn't that hair amazing? Tank. Oh, my goodness. Tank, please. Everybody knows you're the most studliest stud at Yahoo. Everyone knows it. It's true. But we're here halftime with Harmon from the early game live streams. Right off the top, Tank, I want to pick your brain about mm -hmm. the Tennessee Titans uh, because it's – been bad. They're getting stopped in the first half. The Colts look great. I think the Colts are one of the most improved teams in the NFL this year. I know that their record hasn't always shown it, but Chris Ballard has done a great job rebuilding the offensive line. I think that's been an undersold story all year. And I think that Frank Reich really, like, I think they lucked out that Josh McDaniels didn't come there and that they've got Frank Reich as a head coach. I think one of the things you hit on right there is that they improved the, the lines. Like, most of the teams that make those dramatic changes in a short amount of time, they improved the front seven. Yes. And so the offensive line, adding Quentin Nelson and some of these other guys through free agency, they're giving Andrew Luck more time. The shoulder is healthy, everybody. The shoulder is healthy. And so he's averaging like three and a half touchdowns per game. He's spreading the ball around. Who thought Eric Ebron was going to ball like this once he got to Indianapolis? So he's balling. They have Jack Doyle now. They have a run game. Marlon Mack is a baller that you can depend on in your fantasy lineups. And on the flip side of the ball, everybody expected that Indianapolis defense to be terrible. They're creating pressure on the opposing quarterback. They're limiting big plays, and they're limiting the run game. And so they have a sneaky chance to make – I mean, they actually have a sneaky chance to just disrupt the AFC South totally. Right, right. The, the, the bad news for the Colts is, of course, that – Houston is dominating Washington right now. Alex Smith has thrown a couple of really bad interceptions. Uh, they just don't look like a team that's ready to compete in Washington. I mean, we'll see the Eagles here. I mean, right down the street later today. Uh, they should, they should, they should probably compete in that game. But they, they have a shot to really take the NFC East. But in the AFC South, particularly. We've also seen T.Y. Hilton get over here with the one-on-one -one yard game in the first half. And I got T.Y. in my lineup, too. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Dilly, dilly. But let's talk <laughs> on the other side of the field in that game right now. The Titans, Tank. Help me figure out this team, man, because I really want to believe in them. I told a lot of people this week that I think the Titans' offense is back, but I also realize that like, I just have lost all objectivity to project this team. Where do you see this team right now? Why have, why do they consistently struggle every, like, third game? Uh, it, I, I honestly, like, I wish I it's had an answer for answer. you. Like, it's I don't know. Answer, yeah. Because there's some games where they can actually run the ball, and you're like, Deion Lewis is a amazing play because they're giving him a lot of volume in the offense. You can use him in a pass game and in a run game, and they can move the ball effectively. Yeah. And then you come out another game, and they can't run the ball. And then Marcus Mariota has been dealing with the nerve injury so he didn't have feeling in his hands so you can understand why the passing game was going you know down in the early part right, of the season right, right. but then he explodes last week with Corey Davis looking like the guy who yeah. should have been drafted in the top five of the draft and then now like he disappeared like a ghost so I think it's one of those things where this team needs some consistency when they when they beat Philadelphia early in the season they were like yo you need to give Tennessee some respect like put some respect on our name no, you earn respect, not in yeah, front of the camera. Yeah, you earn it between right. the white lines. And so if you consistently go out there, play your best ball against some of the best teams, don't worry. Everyone, including us, will give you your props. But until you do that, we're going to give you the gas face, like you're getting right now in Indianapolis. <laughs> One of our questions from the chat, someone said, Marcus is like Jameis. He's just not a quarterback in this league. Maybe, I, I don't know, um, Marcus Mariota got hurt again in this game. Blaine Gabbard came in for a little bit. That has been an issue with Marcus Mariota's. It's just always an injury. I, I think he's a good quarterback overall. I think he's good, but I will say that I really like Tua better than Marcus Mariota already. Oh, oh well, we're already looking forward. <laughs> See, Tank is he's a guy who does college football throughout the year, oh. so you're a little bit more prepared with the prospects. Which, but I will say nice. this, though. like When you looked at Mar Marcus Mariota against the Dallas Cowboys, he made some throws. like He dropped a dime on the seam route yeah. where a lot of quarterbacks can't make that unless you're an NFL-caliber quarterback. He's amazing with his legs, and so that puts extra stress on the defense. He just needs to put it all together where he can deliver the ball consistently. Once he can get to that point, I feel like you'll see the maturation process and the ascension of Marcus Mariota, but he just isn't there yet. More time in this offense will certainly help, too. Uh, before we get to our next game that we're going to talk about, we, ha we do have a question in the chat about how are the Lions winning? Uh, what's wrong with the Panthers? Why are they so up and down? I will hit on that game right after we talk the most important thing, which is what are you drinking? Um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. So when the waitress came over here, I was like, can I get a big ass IPA? And she was like, I love you already, dog. And I was like, and I love you more. And so everybody at the table is drinking big ass IPAs. That's what we do. That's how we do it here, Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> Halftime with Harmon coming to you right now, live from walk-ons in New Orleans. We will be back again at 6 p.m. Eastern time. But Tank, let's talk about the Carolina Panthers, Detroit Lions. Carryon Johnson ripped off a nice long play in this one. He's really looking to me like one of the best young backs in the league. Yeah, and it's pretty crazy because when you look at him going into this matchup, it really wasn't a good one for him. Right. Because well, I would say the Panthers' defense is one of the most disappointing units in the league to me. Yeah. I know Matt Patricia this week said, I, I watch tape and I think the Panthers have a good defense. I was like, bro, what are, what are you I, watching? I, like when we saw Tyler Boyd go slap uh, off against them, yes. we were like, all right, there's some vulnerability in Slot that Slot receivers have given them trouble all year. Captain Munnerlyn has been a good player for this team in both of his stints there, but I think he's starting to decline at this point. They have two good corners. James Bradbury, I think, has, he's had some monster games this year. He shut down Mike Evans a little while ago. And Dante Jackson, who actually got hurt for a little bit in this game, he had he's I think he's a good young cornerback, but he's still a rookie. I mean, yeah. you're going to give up plays. But what is it about? Why do you think the Panthers are, are another team like the Titans so up and down? I, honestly, I, I really don't understand why because, like you said, they have their moments where they play amazing ball. Like, there was no excuse for them to go into Pittsburgh on Thursday night and get beat like that. No, that like, awful. of course, like Christian McCaffrey, like everyone that owned him, they had a wonderful had a great game. experience great in that game. game because he scored three touchdowns. But for Cam to go in that game and just fall flat, for the defense to just give up chunk plays after chunk plays, like there's no reason that Juju Smith-Schuster catches a 75-yard bomb on the first play of the Steelers' I mean, offensive I drove possession. home from that game. Uh, well, I drove home from work and got – got home about 10 minutes into the game and I was like oh my god how is it already like right. 14 to 7 what's what's happening here and so they they connect on that bomb Cam comes back the very next play in the first drive and then he throws up the gimme for another right. pick six yeah, right. I mean so you can't have those type of no. bonehead plays if you're competing to be the best team in your division the best team in the league because who do you have to face like two out of the last three games of the season the team where we're watching Saints. them today, the New Orleans Saints. And if you're playing ball like that, you don't get molly -wop. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get wrecked. I mean, I think there's still probably a playoff team. We'll see how the rest of this game comes up. I mean, it's 10-7 to 7 right now, Detroit winning. I think the Panthers will continue to Woo! compete. But and actually, they struggled in Detroit, what was it, last year or two years ago? A game yeah, that they should have yeah, won and yeah, they got yeah, waxed. Yeah, yeah. So. That's, that's when Kelvin Benjamin was still on the team. That yeah. feels like a million years ago at this point. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that they're a team that will find themselves, but they are a roller coaster ride because, look, their quarterback is, I think Cam Newton's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, yeah. but he runs hot and cold sometimes. Yeah, sometimes he rips up in that shirt and you see Superman. Other times. Then other times you rip up in that shirt yeah, yeah. and it's Hello Kitty. <laughs> it happens. I would love to see a Photoshop of the Hello Kitty uh, on, on, on Cam Newton's jersey there. But, yeah, no, and, and also this team offensively, like, they, they have offensive line problems. They've managed to get around yeah. it most of the year. But we saw a team in Pittsburgh that can get after the quarterback in their own stadium really take it to them. And I think that's going to be an issue with a lot of these NFC contenders. You've got Philadelphia, you know, if they start to find it, find themselves, they have a really good pass rush. New Orleans has some good players up front. That's going to be an issue for Carolina going forward. But but the really interesting thing, too, is like we're talking about all this team, and at the same time they have these strengths, but then they have the vulnerabilities. Like New Orleans gives up the big chunk plays in the past game. So does Philly. Mm -hmm. So does the Los Angeles Rams. So it's That's going true. to be up That's to true. which team is clicking on all cylinders. Like we're probably not going to cover this game, but the Kansas City Chiefs, like they started off right, getting right, waxed right, yeah. early in the season, but they've had a couple home games. They limited the big plays, and now they're playing really well on defense. So I'm interested to see if that's going to carry over against the Rams on uh, Monday night. And as you can see, Dilly are, Dilly is going off in here. There are a lot of Eagles fans here in New Orleans this week. We've been out and about on yeah. the town all weekend, and there are a lot of Eagles fans out there. So it has been a lot of fun being in New Orleans so far. I'm having a blast. What's What's been your favorite part of the trip? I'm a fat boy at heart, so I, I just love eating all the food. Like, I came home and I visited my family beforehand, so I've been eating nonstop oh, so been, since I've gotten here. Like, poor boys, gumbo, neck bones. You probably don't even know what neck bones means, but I love it. Llama beans, like everything, so i just been grubbing, dog. Tank ordered something like some sort of hudem balls or something. And weren't they amazing, or did you try them? I haven't tried them yet, but just I'll say, he's trying to keep his sexy figure for the camera. Oh, please. Are you kidding? 
and they're here, and they're here. Tank, I have had a po' boy two days in a row. I'm not trying to keep anything sexy at this point, Stop. and if I'm trying, I am failing. We're going to roll right into Thanksgiving, too, which is... This is going to be a rough Well, at least we made room for Turkey Day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I might have to stop on Target on the way home from the airport and, like, buy, like, an extra size shirt a little just because <laughs> I'm going to be spacing it out here. We're all going to be spacing it out. So let's talk about uh, the Detroit Lions a little bit, as we were just talking about earlier. Carry on Johnson. I think he's one of the best young backs in the league right now. I want to – and, look, they're making it work even with the Aritic playing a big role as, like, a slot receiver. Yeah. I mean, carry on Johnson, he's sneaky smooth. He has, like, deceptive speed. And the Detroit Lions are finally giving him enough volume on offense for him to be impactful in your fantasy lineups. Like, like I said today, like he didn't have the best matchup against the Carolina rush defense, but he was able to get in the end zone. They're going to continue to pound him because they've been one of the most run-heavy teams in the yeah, league yeah. along with Seattle. And so I think Carryon is one of those guys that you can really depend on, not only now, but as you get later into the season in your fantasy playoffs. Yeah, the funny thing about the Lions, like, I don't agree with these teams, like them in Seattle, as you mentioned, becoming more run heavy. I think you need to focus on the pass in 2018, but I don't think much has gone right for Detroit, but that has certainly worked. Their recommitment to the ground game has certainly worked. He looks good. Frank Ragnow has made a difference on the offensive line. You know, for the most part, they've been a good running team this year. I want to talk, we got a couple questions about Big Ben in the chat, mostly just like WTF related questions. Uh, what's, but, what's, what's but that's, going on that, that's something that you shouldn't be surprised about. Whenever Big Ben plays away from Heinz Field, there's always the potential for yep. him to play like Blake Bortles. Right. And that's right. what he's doing right now. I mean, so you can't be too surprised. Yeah. You have to understand that that's the risk you run when you're Ben Roethlisberger on. And this is an ugly game to start. Their first four drives for Pittsburgh went punt, interception, punt, interception. Yeah. Not great when you're ping ponging like that. What and one you thing you have to understand too is that even though I mean, even though Jacksonville's been getting their head beat in, I think they've lost five in a row. That defense hasn't been performing that bad. They're still pretty good against the run. Still pretty good against the pass. The only position that they really give up a lot of points to is the tight end. And so this is one of those kind of trap games where if you really wasn't looking at the stats coming into it, you can get a little bit deceived based on Pittsburgh's performance against Carolina on Thursday. But this is going to be a tough matchup for Pittsburgh. And you think, too, this this team in Jacksonville, they really have good players. Like, even when a defense is not performing, I mean, there was no way they were going to repeat their performance from 2017. Hold just on one second. Watch this. Hey, I'm on live internet right now. I'm at Walgreens. Come see me. Come here. Just just look for the light, and then you'll see me, and then you can come get on camera. This is what it's like to be with a celebrity like <laughs> Tank Williams. Uh, Tank, we got a, one question from the chat. Oh, actually, a couple of questions. Wentz or Goff, who do you like better this week? Um, that's a good question. It's a tough one. I was, just talk, I was just talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, too, and how that defense has been playing better. Yeah. But I, I think I like the environment. Mm. No, I'm going to go at golf at home. Yeah, me too. I'm going to go at golf at home in a shootout. That was a good good, good call. Yeah. You I, said I had to check myself. Yeah, yeah. But in, in, in the end, you answered it correctly, yeah. so that was nice. What about Lamar Jackson? Have you been able to see? I mean, there's about 30 I heard TVs through, I heard plate. through the, the, the grapevine that he already has like 60, 70 yards rushing. And it may be one yeah. of those things that if they beat the Bengals this week, he's showing how he can impact the game with his legs and with his arm. Yeah. Bye, Flacco. I, I think the future is now for Baltimore. I think they can – reestablish more of a running identity with Lamar Jackson. Obviously, we know that rushing quarterbacks boost the performance of running backs. They're just going to be a much more run-heavy team. I mean, Joe Flacco is like leading the NFL in pass attempts coming into this week. Right. Like, what, what, are, what are we doing? That's that's not going to work. I think we see Lamar Jackson the rest of the way. This Bengals defense is really bad, so you have to put his performance into context. But right, true. The Ravens also, I was watching a little bit of this game, you've got to trust him more. You've got to let him get into a passing rhythm. Because he's mostly been a gadget player so far, so yeah. I'd like to see them let him loose a little bit. But I do think the future is now for Baltimore. Yeah, they're going to treat him with kid gloves. But just think, like, Alex Con Collins, he's flashed at moments. Yes. So just imagine if they do an RPO system with him where you have the threat of Lamar keeping the ball running or Alex taking it up a scene or you throwing it to Smokey Brown on the outside. I think if they start, you know, utilizing more of those plays in the uh, Ravens offense, then they can become dangerous, especially if that defense is clicking on all cylinders. Oh. No doubt. All right, Tank, we've got just a few seconds left. What are you watching in the second half? What do you really want to see out of any game out there? Uh, honestly, I'm just like any other fantasy fan out there. I want to see my players ball. So if T.Y. scores another touchdown, you're going to see me and all that. So every time one of my players ball, 
I'll take a drink. That's Ooh. all I'm looking for. Well, we'll be taking plenty simple. of drinks right here in Walk-Ons live from New Orleans. He's Tank Williams at Tank Williams 13. Hey, Thanks. follow me. I need to get my followers yeah. up or they're going to fire me. So please That's follow me. Point. Love me. That's a good point. He's he's yeah, he's on the line makes here. He's them on the more. Thanks for coming by, Tank. It makes really appreciate think it. About it. You too can much watch the show again at run. 6 p.m. Eastern time. I'm Matt Harmon at Matt Harmon underscore BYB. We'll see you then. Yeah. That's the only time we'll get that ending on that show.